Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm JT and I'm super glad to have you guys here. And today we have a little review of a neat little Kodak Pony 4 camera. Now, what's neat about this camera is not only that it was made in 1957, what's really awesome about this camera is this 44 millimeter 3.5 lens. So today we're gonna take a look around this camera, do like a little bit of a review. Now be sure to stick around to the end of the video because we're gonna take a look at the first roll of film I shot through this and I was ridiculously surprised at the quality of this piece of glass in this lens. Now let's take a little bit of a look around this. We have our lens obviously on the front which is a Kodak Anastar lens. It's a 44 millimeter 3.5. So for a little camera like this back in 1957, this was a heck of a piece of technology. This thing was very sturdily built obviously by the fact that it's lasted 63 years. It has this nice little Kodak logo on the front. We have our winding knobs here. And to open this and to load it with film, you push this little indentation on the side, and it's a little bit of a pain. You push it down, and then you slide this part down, and then the back of the camera just pops off like that. You load your film in by pulling up this little winding knob, wind it around a couple times, and you're ready to go. And then putting this back on is as easy as matching the slots up and then closing this little door if I can do it the right way. There we go. And again, you just wind your knob. There's a little reset button on the back. So when you get a fresh new roll of film in there, you reset it, cock your shutter, and you are good to snap your photo. Now what's really neat about this camera in addition to being 63 years old was the amazing build quality and the condition that I found it in. It also came with this little cheat sheet on the back here of exposure values with a bunch of arbitrary numbers. And I didn't understand what those meant until I looked at the top of the lens here. So the cool thing is, is the shutter number and the lens opening number or the aperture number have corresponding values right here. Eight through five for my shutter and four through nine or nine through four for my aperture. Now what you do to get a proper exposure, if you don't know anything about photography in the 1950s, 1960s, you add those numbers up and you compare them to the values that are given on the back. So let's say we have a bright and sunny day it says a value of 12.5. So what I'll do is I will set my shutter to eight and then I will set my lens opening or aperture to 4.5 because 4.5 and eight equal 12 and that is my settings. And what's really cool, if you do know photography, you have the actual aperture and shutter speeds on the bottom. So that would be a shutter speed of 250, which we have right here on our shutter ring and an aperture of, it looks like 5.6 on my little aperture ring. And it's such a neat feature and something kind of difficult to get used to, um, but having your shutter like cocking lever right there and having your shutter adjustment right here on the lens, because again, for these cameras, the shutter is actually just your aperture flicking open and closed very quickly, which is super neat. So if we take a look at the top of the camera, we have our shoe on top that'll hold a flash or any sort of accessory. And then we have our little uh, exposure counter, which is kind of cute right there. And you can see there's a little notch for 24 if you have a roll of film that's only 24 exposures. And then it goes all the way around back to 36 if you have a 36 exposure roll and that just spins around as you wind your winding knob with a roll of film in here. So overall, I think this is a really fun camera and I'm so grateful that when I picked this up from a thrift store, I got it in such an amazing, you know, condition because 63 years is a lot of time for this thing to get kicked around and busted and, you know, there's not a scratch in the lens. The lens quality is perfect. There's some little scuffs on here and some little just wear marks on the back again from being 60 years old. But the quality of this and the quality of photos that came out of this are really amazing. We're gonna take a look at those in just a second. And if you have any questions about this camera, maybe you found one online that you'd like to pick up, I think I paid about 15 or $20 for this at a thrift shop down in Texas. And 
I've had a blast with it. It's just a lot of fun to shoot. Again, that tactile sound, the clicking of winding it up, resetting that next roll of film, and then cocking your shutter lever, and then taking your exposure. Oh, I love the sounds of that, and that's kind of why I've gotten into film again. And as most of you know, 2020, I kind of called it my year of film, where one of my biggest goals was to shoot a lot of film, and I'm probably about 20 rolls in, so I'm doing a lot better than the last couple of years. I've only shot a roll or two. So as soon as I got home from buying this camera at the thrift shop, I threw a roll of Fuji 400 Superior in this guy, loaded it up, winded it up, and it turned out great. So what I did was I got the film developed, I scanned it in with my Nikon Z6, did some minor tweaks in camera raw. I did a pretty good job at eyeballing the exposure. Some of them were a little underexposed, some of them were a little overexposed or blurry, but that's just the fun of shooting with film. And I'll leave in some of the blurry photos in there too, because again, that's a part of it. But let's take a look at these photos right now. All right, so I hope you enjoyed those photos. I had a ton of fun shooting with this Pony 4 camera. Again, the lens quality is fantastic for what it is, and it was really awesome to find the manual PDF online as well. So if you'd like to see part one of this video, I'll link it down in the description and have a little card up here pop up. But if you can find this guy for 10, 15, 20 bucks, I definitely recommend you pick it up. It's just a ton of fun to blow through a roll of film with it, and I promise you won't be let down by the quality of the photos you take. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. So until next time, get out and go shoot.